right, today we're talking about another kind of tricky topic called entropy. Now, entropy is not quantum mechanics, but uh, it is a little complicated. However, I think I've got some really good examples that's going to help us understand things. All right? uh, and entropy basically is a way to look at the organization of many, many different objects and be able to learn something about it. And it bases the idea on having many, many objects. Okay, So I'm going to have to scale it down, just use a few and kind of talk about it. But a lot of different objects and, how, and those groups of objects okay, will tend to be spread out in sort of a random order. Okay, So I have a bunch of pennies here. All right? And on one side I have a white spot. Okay, and on the other side, I don't. All right, so and I can flip them over, and now I have uh, the white spot on this side and no spot on that side. Okay, so pennies, they all have two sides, and you can tell them apart. So I'm going to pick up 10 of these pennies. All right, white spots on one side. And how many of the pennies do you think are going to land on the ground with the white spot face up? Boom. All right, and if I look at them, all right, the odds are what you'd think would happen is for five of them to land with their white spots face up. Okay? Now, that is just what you think by chance. All right? And so if you were walking along and then you came across pennies and you saw that all of them were heads up, like say 10 pennies, you would think, well, that's kind of odd. All right? But you might not think too much of it. But if you came across 100 pennies lying on the ground right, with all of them face up, you would think, oh, this is not how pennies are normally supposed to land. 100% of them face up. Okay. Well, this is due to entropy. Entropy tells you that things will tend to become disordered. And the most, in the way you can disorder pennies the most is to have half of them be uh, all spread out in tails and half of them all on heads. Okay. And that's really not that interesting uh, in terms of talking about entropy uh, because the, each side of the penny is equivalent, like in terms of like the la odds of landing on one side is about the same as landing on the other. And so every time I shake up my pennies, I should, if I have enough of them, I should have roughly half of them be heads up and half of them tails. Okay? And if I have enough pennies, you'll get really close within like a percent or something. If I had millions and millions of pennies and poured them out on the ground, I would not be, I would, I would get about 50% heads and 50% tails, right? Within a couple degrees of precision. All right. So that's kind of boring. We can talk about entropy now if we use something that's not a penny. And I'm going to use these cool blocks. All right. OK, so this block is not like a penny. All right. In fact, there are two different ways this block can land down. It can land down on its end or on its side. Okay. And there's actually four sides. So you, know, you can land four different ways and two ends. All right. And so basically, for every two sides, there is one end. So there's three different ways it can land, on a side, on a side, or on an end. Okay? So that's what I want you to think about when we look at these blocks. And these now are going to be different than the pennies because this side is very different than this side. All right? So if, this, if we land on the end, see, you can tip this over, uh, boom, all right? and actually get energy out of the block. Okay? And if you want to go back to that, you actually have to put energy in. Okay, and so really what's going on here is this energy state of the block is higher than that one. Okay, and so keep that in mind as we talk. All right, now I have nine blocks here, all right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake them up. I right, put them in a big box here and shake them up. All right, and then I'm going to try and pour them out onto the table. All right, and of course some of them didn't land perfect. All right, so we're going to pretend they landed like that. All right, now. You would expect, if they were pennies, for half of them to lay one way and half of them to lay another way. Okay? Now, these blocks are, actually have, you know, like we said, six different sides. Okay? And so there's really two different ways they land. If you keep track of all that, basically, uh, if you take three blocks, right, two of them are going to land like this. A third could land like that. Now, that is only true if every way of landing is equivalent. Okay, it takes the same amount of energy. Okay, so if you think of these as atoms, yes, if an atom could be here or could be there with the same amount of energy, you're going to find it 50-50 each way. But if this is like an atom in that there's a higher energy state that's upright, okay, you're going to find it down like this most of the time, 
And every once in a long while, depending on its energy at the higher state, you're going to find it upright. So here I've thrown them on the table. I landed two. They were kind of upright. We're going to call them upright. And so we see that we've now got uh, seven blocks lying down and two upright. Okay. And so what that says is, using entropy, we know that if all of them are lying flat, that's not expected. If I had enough blocks, if I had more blocks, I had lots and lots of, and lots of blocks. Oh, they're all lying flat. Oh, okay. It would be odd for them to be thrown down on the floor and exactly all of them, if I had lots of blocks, right, to be lying flat. Okay. You'd expect at least a few of them to line upright, land upright. Okay. And in the same token, if they were all upright, that would also be odd, right? You would expect that a lot of them would generally fall down over time. And so here's the power of entropy, right? It predicts that if we have just a whole pile of blocks, most of them are going to be lying in the lowest energy state, but a few will be in a higher energy state, depending on how high, how high the energy is. All right? And so if they all start flat over time, eventually some of them are going to pop up. And if they all start up, eventually over time, some of them are going to fall down. So we can use this idea to talk about getting energy out of a reaction due to entropy. You can also put energy in. But let's think about all our atoms or molecules in a high energy state. If you have them knock over to a lower energy state, like that, boom, we've gotten energy out. Okay? And so you get energy coming out of the reaction. All right? And so in odds are, like most of them will fall down, but you still have some landing straight up, okay, to be perfectly right. Okay, and this, by the same manner, though, and this is where it gets really cool, is if you get them all in the lowest energy state, and there's another state that's not too high up, so there's a chance for some of them to be up in that. Okay, we start the lowest energy state. Some of them will spontaneously want to pop up into the higher energy state. Okay, because you have, remember, you have like billions of these or whatever it is. All right? And so the odds are some of them are going to want to pop up, pop up like that. And that takes energy. So you can have a reaction that naturally occurs that actually absorbs energy rather than releases energy. It's crazy. It's awesome. Now, here is the best part, is that you use entropy all the time to do one thing. And that is play with rubber bands. A rubber band is a great example of entropy in action. When you stretch a rubber, a rubber band, okay, there's actually really long molecules in the rubber band. And when you pull on them, okay, they're kind of wavy, waving all the way back and forth and zigzagging, stuff like that. When you pull them out, they become straight. Okay, and there's actually fewer of them. They're kind of more ordered when you stretch them out like that. Okay? And so what they want to do is they want to become disordered, and so they pull back. So I stretch it out and it pulls back, and I stretch it out, and it pulls back. It's, you're not actually, you are just a little bit, but for the most part, you're not actually stretching the bond so much between the, the molecules. You're actually lengthening them out. And entropy is what causes a rubber band to snap back. So the next time you are playing with a little paper airplane or whatever airplane with a little uh, rubber band motor, you can tell yourself, wind that thing up and let it go, and that airplane, it's flying due to the power or energy it's getting from entropy. Now if I could only figure out how to harness the entropy of my messy office. We'll begin to become a little bit more ordered. Okay, a little bit, uh, that makes sense. And so uh, here's the power of entropy. We pre pre predict, okay, so I have a bunch of pennies, okay, and some have uh, a white spot on one side. Well, they all have one spot. Okay, and I'm going to shake them up. Oh, it's very hard, shake. Oh, and then we're gonna put them on the table. Okay, and one of them fell down. Like 